In this video, we are going to look at how to connect our Xamarin iOS app to an external web service. And if you're not familiar with the concept here, external web services are basically programs that are running on servers out on the internet. Uh, some of them are publicly available, some of them are not. And our applications can connect with these web service technologies and do some processing, look up information, right? There's some very useful web services out there, uh, specifically ones for like uh, US Postal Service and FedEx. You can connect to those web services to verify, you know, shipping addresses or zip codes. You can pull down lists of area codes. You can find all kinds of information that is readily available and you can just kind of plug it into your application or allows some processing to be done outside of the device in, in a way that just provides us the data or the response back. So there's a, a number of different web service technologies and the Xamarin platform makes this very easy because we can consume different web service technologies that are either built into our .NET framework or that are kind of a third party supported. So if you're not familiar with some of these uh, kind of web service terms or technologies, you'll want to go read up. Uh, I have the provided uh, kind of lesson that goes along with this video. But like REST, ASMX, Windows Communication Foundation, I, that's what makes this, uh, the, you know, the whole Xamarin tools thing and the idea of being able to build our apps here and not in Xcode or in Android Studio uh, really makes this kind of powerful. So the web service that we are going to use in this example comes from our good friends over at W3Schools, who if you're not familiar with has some pretty amazing web development tutorials. And they have two web services available under this temp convert kind of namespace. So it's a basically temperature conversion Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. So you can click on these and get some information about the uh, kind of SOAP implementation. There's an example of a HTTP post request and response. Uh, you can actually come up here and test. So like if I put in 50 and invoke the web service, we can see that that's going to come back as 10, right? Because 50 Fahrenheit is uh, 10 Celsius. And so these are the web services we're going to use in today's example. So I've already got into our application and started my main storyboard. And I've set up just a box to collect the temperature in Fahrenheit, a button to invoke our web service and get our response, and then just a label that we can use to display the information that comes back. Now I'm going to be using the Windows Communication Foundation uh, kind of technology for web services in order to connect this. And so if you're already familiar with how .NET applications connect to web services via WCF, then this is going to be an extreme cakewalk of an example. If not, just stick with me. This is fairly easy to do. So we'll come over to our Solution Explorer, find your References section. We're going to right click on References and add a web reference. Now previously I showed you this website uh, that has the ASMX ending to it. I copied that and that is what I paste here in the URL. And so I'll show you this uh, URL here real close so that you can make sure and get that. Now once you've got it in there, go ahead and click this arrow off to the side. It will navigate. You should see that same page that we saw in the browser. Over here it says that one web service was found, which is temp convert. And it gives us the web reference name, kind of like a namespace. We're going to click Add Reference. And so that will add our reference over here uh, under the Web References section, under References in our Solution Explorer. And it's going to load in some extra packages and things from the .NET framework that we're going to need. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and give my Calculate button here a little double click so that I get into my view controller and it creates my click event. 
Next, I'm going to come up to the Using Statement section because we're going to have to add in a couple of .NET libraries for this example. So the first one I'm going to add is System.NET.NetworkInformation. This is the library that contains the classes and objects we need in order to check the kind of Wi-Fi antenna or network connectivity of the device that we're working on. So it would be incredibly bad practice to just reach out and try to consume a web service on a device that wasn't actually connected to the internet. And that is one of the downsides of using a web service is that it, your app will require constant connectivity back to the server at least for every time you're trying to make a call to that web server um, and consume that service. So uh, while you know it's, it's really a transactional based system where once we click the button it's going to call the web service, do the processing, get the response, and then close the connection. But should I want to continuously do that then I will need to make sure that I'm still connected to the network. So that is the using statement we will need for that. Also up here in the using statement section we're going to go ahead and create a reference to this web reference that we previously imported in. Now I let it keep its name which was com.w3schools.www which is a little awkward um, but you could if you actually renamed this when you imported it in then it would rename itself as the web reference and so it's going to be using whatever your namespace is and so I named this iOS web service and then we'll see there's com there's w3schools there's www so we need this reference in here otherwise we'd have to type out and fully qualify this every time we want to use or reference our web service which is no fun so adding this using statement in helps that a little bit so now that we have those two using statements the first thing we're going to do is check for network availability right so we don't want to try to connect to our web service and then find out that we're in airplane mode or something and then it's just gonna crash your app isn't gonna be able to complete and you're gonna get an exception and then that's right that's bad so I'm gonna set up a little boolean variable I'm gonna call it check and so this is network interface uh, get is network available and so that's going to return a true or false so get is network available it just returns like I said just returns a true or false so there's no way to tell what kind of connection this is um, so if this is a Wi-Fi connection or like a 3G 4G data connection uh, we don't know and so uh, it may be best to prompt if you're getting ready to do something that's going to be incredibly data intensive that you warn the user first because they could be on their data connection and you could just like fill up their megabytes right so that's no no good so I'm just going to say okay great if they have a connection then you know that's they have a connection we can use and if they don't then uh, we don't want this to do anything I'm just gonna return you could actually present you know a UI control uh, UI alert sorry and and say but uh, um, hey you don't have a connection so we can't do anything so our processing is going to go in here in the true block for our if statement okay so now we can start our invocation or we actually call this consumption of a web service and so this is a temp convert object uh, and we should be able to set up a uh, kind of I'm just gonna call it client object type here so just like setting up any other class object that you've ever used in .NET so I can now call the client and we're gonna use the uh, we're asking for Fahrenheit we want Celsius back so we want uh, there's two different versions there's Fahrenheit to Celsius and then there's Fahrenheit to Celsius async and in the Fahrenheit to Celsius async right it's an asynchronous call so it's not going to sit there and wait uh, for a response it, we can continue processing while we're waiting which is temporary typically what we want to be able to do and we notice in the constructor here it takes a string which is the Fahrenheit and so I have my temp box on the uh, on the view there and I'm just gonna use the dot text to get that out since it's a string 
So this is, uh, we created an instance of the object. We, we basically called called the method on the web service service that will do the processing. And so Windows Communication Foundation is going to handle all of the connectivity. So it's going, it knows where the web service lives. It's going to reach out, make the call, call this Fahrenheit to Celsius method, pass the data, and then it's going to get a response. So we need to set up uh, some kind of event handler that's listening for that response. So we're going to say set up uh, event handler that is listening for the response. Since this is an asynchronous call, we could be doing anything else we want in the background. The user could continue to interact with the view or the form while, while this is processing if it takes a while, which it's not going to. This is pretty instantaneous. Uh, so I'm going to set up client and then we have Celsius, uh, no Fahrenheit to Celsius completed is the event and so we're going to add an, an event to that uh, so this is our event handler and so uh, we can call this I'm going to call it client underscore uh, <laughs> I can't type Fahrenheit to Celsius completed right that sounds good so this will be the name of the event that we need to set up and that's what we will or where we will do our processing okay so make sure you are out of this submit button event right there's the end in curly brace and so our event handler um, oh, it's this whole word right here when this gets raised right that's the that's the technical term so when this is raised in, and then it's going to um, set us up down here so that our event can can take place, right? So what do we want to do with that data when we get it back? Okay, so when this event handler is raised and it's going to call our event handler down here, it's going to be expecting that we are prepared to take two different parameters. So one is the object, uh, I could type object, uh, that is the sender, which we don't need to use for this particular example. But the second one is the Celsius or Fahrenheit. I keep trying to do Celsius first. Fahrenheit to Celsius completed event args. You saw it there pop up in my IntelliSense. I usually just name it E. Um, that's a .NET naming convention you can use or not. And so this this completed event args is the response that we got back from the server wherever our web service was whatever processing it did and so we're just going to take that response and put it in the label right because I, I set up that label on the main storyboard here the temp in Celsius is and so we're just going to append uh, our our event args onto that so it is I believe I called it output label yep dot text and so whatever I put in here is what's going to show up and I want um, and I could do like a, a plus equals I believe so that I just append that data onto the end of that um, so if we just do e dot result that's going to be the the um, Celsius temperature that's come back from the web service and that's really all there is to it go ahead and give this a build make sure that uh, everything looks cool and then we'll look at this and test it so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here we are in my iPhone emulator. We can see our app. And so I can come over here to the uh, temp and Fahrenheit box. And, you know, previously I had tested it with 50. So if I put 50 in there and hit calculate, then it's going to make that call to the web service and then make our return response. And we can see there that the answer is 10, which we previously checked on the web service, so we know that that is right. And so this is this is it. This is basically um, that's the gist, right? Uh, of using Windows Communication Foundation to set up a uh, call to a web service, make the call, pass the data, set up an event handler, receive the result, do something with the result. And, and that's it. That's all there is to it on the, at least on the .NET framework side of things. And that's what really 
um, gets me fired up about this Xamarin project uh, is that I don't need to know anything about how uh, Apple wants me to use the iOS subsystem to make web service calls. I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, now, different web services are going to work different ways. Uh, we saw on this uh, website over here that they had set up implementations for um, two versions of SOAP and HTTP POST. Basically what's happening under the hood here is that the Windows Communication Foundation is doing all of that work for you and choosing the best way to connect and setting up the connection and authentication, all of those things that we would normally have to do manually. And so that's really the brilliance behind Windows Communication Foundation. So I hope you're now inspired, right? Go out and find some cool web services that you might want to implement into your applications or even write 